All right, so all you guys, I think we're on. Okay, all you guys got to wave, man, because this is being broadcast. Come on. Hi. Yeah. A lot of set free people watching, people from all over the world. Pakistan, Philippines, everywhere. So we're going we're gonna to get this going here. There we go. All right. Well, praise God. It is a blessing, uh, a blessing to be here this evening, uh, this morning. And um, it was a great drive from Arizona, from Yuma, over here. And <clears throat> let me let me just open this up with prayer. I started to get into my message here, but I do want to open it up. Father, I, I thank you so much for the opportunity, Lord, to minister here today. I always look forward to it. And, Lord, I know you have a special message for this uh, group today. And, Lord, I pray that the words that I speak this evening will not be mine, but they'll be yours. Lord, that you'll open up every heart here to be able to hear what it is that you have to say to them and that every spirit of distraction is bound in Jesus name and I thank you for it amen amen, amen. amen. well everybody let's give the Lord a, a hand clap <laughs> praise God I was thinking the other day because I was talking to somebody, we were talking about how fast time seems to go. And it really does. I, I, it seems like, I see my daughter turning, she's 18, she's going to be 19. I remember it just seems like a few years ago that she was three, three years old. And here she is you know, growing up and I begin to look at life in, in general and just see how fast time really moves. And, and I got to tell you, if you don't know it, as you get older, it goes faster. Right. Yeah. And I, I begin to realize, you know, it, it's as we get, begin to be propelled towards eternity, it's almost that we speed up. It's like we're leaving the gravity of the earth and moving towards the gravity of heaven and being pulled, Amen. you know, or, or to the gravity of eternity and being pulled. And so we go faster and faster. I remember when I was a kid, we'd have a Christmas vacation or Christmas holidays and Thanksgiving holidays, whatever the case might be. And especially Christmas it seemed to last forever. You got the, you got your time off from school, and you'd be able to go out and build Christmas tree forts and do all kinds of things, you know, play games and stuff. It lasted forever. And then you go now. It's, I, I watch the holiday, and it seems like you got one or two days for Christmas, and you're back in school. It's, it's you know I see it with the kids, and it just makes me realize as I look back, and especially now getting older, how how fast time goes, and and, and it's so important. That, and I realized this as I was thinking about it. I thought, man, how many years I wasted. I thought, what a waste of time. When I go back and I look at my life back in the day, and, and where I'm at today and how I'm walking today, I realized I wasted so many years of my life. And I think probably many of us can relate to that. Maybe some of you can't, but you will. You'll, there are some of you guys that are younger than me, and maybe you're just in it or just getting out of it. And so you don't really understand it. But as, as time progresses in your walk with God, you're going to look back. And <clears throat> as you grow in your relationship with the Lord, you're going to realize, man, what a waste of time. Yeah, yeah. Now, we can relate there, there, you know, to, to, to that, I think, with, with one another. But I, I think there's a... Uh, an individual in the scriptures that wrote wrote a lot of scripture that also can relate to it. Amen. So I want to talk with you this morning a little bit about Solomon. Yeah. But I want to lay down a little bit of a foundation for you, just some thoughts as we get into this, okay? Because when we think about Solomon, we know that he wrote the book of Proverbs. We know that he wrote the Song of Solomon or Song of Songs. And we know that uh, he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, right? Yes. And Solomon is the son of David. Yes. And 
he wrote the Proverbs, and you wonder how a person that wrote the Proverbs and was so full of the wisdom of God actually fell and strayed, because he did. He strayed away for a long time. Yeah. He tried every kind of religion, had relationships with, uh, did everything he wasn't supposed to do. Amen. He did it. He was trying to find satisfaction. It wasn't enough what his father had told him, what he had seen, and what he had learned. And it's a sad thing that we can't learn from others, but some of us have to get out there and we find, have to find out the hard way. Yeah, absolutely. And Solomon was one of those that went out and tried everything, and he had the means to do it. There are some of you that haven't got the means, and some of us that haven't got the means to try everything under the sun, but he did. And he, and he tried it all. And you know... I've heard it said that Solomon could actually be the only person that ever wrote a scripture that we have in the Bible or that was ever recorded in the scripture to have been lost. Right. Think about that. Now, I don't believe that occurred. I believe that, that my own personal belief is that he repented. Right. But see, we don't know at the end of it all when we read the book of Ecclesiastes when he finally came to his conclusions that the best thing to do is just to serve God. Amen. We don't know whether those were words of repentance or whether they were words of regret, do we? Think about it. Sometimes you can finally come to the conclusion that you just screwed up and blew it. If I'd only served God. You know, or you can repent and say that this is the way to do it, serve Amen. God. So we don't really know, and there are some people that think that he may have been lost, and there are other people that think that he made it. I, I, I tend to be one that thinks that he made it. I'd like to believe the positive. But either way, folks, there's a lot that we can learn. And so this morning, and God has really put this on my heart for this group this evening, and this morning to, to bring this message to you. And I, I prayed and I asked the Lord, Lord, give me the right words. Help me to communicate what it is that, that each one here needs to hear. I can relate to this because I live this life. I understand it. Not many people have the ability to, to, to do everything in life. And I'm not up here to, to bring adulation or to brag about anything. I just need to speak the facts. Okay, so that I can lay the foundation that you're not hearing a message from somebody that's preaching out of a book that hasn't yeah. been there. Yeah. I have been there. There are not many people that can say that. They, they, there are people that have had experiences in life. We all have. <clears throat> but not many people can say, I've been through the whole thing. I've, I've, I've seen everything almost. I have. Yeah. I'm an older person now. I'm a lot older. But some of you guys don't know how old I am. I'm probably not going to say, but I'm a lot older than probably you think. Uh -huh. And I had the financial means. Uh, I know what it's like to have nothing. I know what it's like to have a lot. Amen. And I had the financial means to do anything I wanted to do. Okay, I was one of those people that, 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 that could do it. And I did it. I went out and I did... There, I, I, for being one guy, I lived the lives of probably three people. Hmm. And I'm not going to get into everything that I did or anything like that. But let me just say that, um, you know... I hung out with the most elite people in the world. Amen. Um, actors, actresses, athletes. Played in a lot of uh, uh, competitive sports and stuff. Was well known in, 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 in a lot of different uh, venues, a lot of different fields for a lot of different things that I did. I squandered my life. I, 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 I would go out three or four days without sleep. And just, just, I don't know how I did it. <laughs> But I did, you know, and I didn't want to come home because I didn't want to face myself. So I just stayed out. And I lived this, this crazy life. Of, of, it, a three or four hundred dollar dinner was nothing for me. It was like breakfast at Denny's. It was nothing. I, I lived this, this crazy life because deep inside of my heart, you see, I was, I was, I was lonely. I didn't have that. I grew up in church. But somehow, some way, in some way, I, I, I'd heard it, I believed it, I, I, I never doubted 
who God was, but I just couldn't relate to him as loving me. I, I, I could relate to him as loving other people. But I couldn't relate, relate it to myself. And I made a few mistakes here and a few mistakes there, and I fell into condemnation. Because, you know, when you know a lot, you feel, more, you feel guilty when you fail. You think, well, you know, I really should have known better, or I, I knew better, and I should have done better, but I didn't. And so many times the devil will come in and begin to hit at people and say, well, you know, of all people you should have known, and you begin to get down on yourself, and so you just begin to start looking at other things. And I think the thing, when I look back <laughs> at my life, that drove me into the life that I lived was loneliness. I could be in a group of a hundred, of, of a hundred thousand of people, but I was always felt alone. Now, I don't know if any of you guys have ever experienced that, but I always did. And even when I hung out with all these people that I knew, I still felt alone. They could see me, I could see them, but they couldn't see what was in, going on inside. Amen. And I was trying to satisfy that with all these different things. Just different relationships. Different projects. I learned so many things. I have scuba dived, I've flown, I have a pilot's license, I had this, I had that. I did everything. I used to touch, I used to tell people here that one of my biggest decisions in life, because I, I had expensive cars and stuff, really expensive cars. <laughs> they would be really, really expensive today, too. And I'd get up in the morning and I would actually have to sit there. I'd put my, my elbow on one of my cars like that and try to figure out which, what, which one do I drive today? Because I had three or, three or four cars, three of them, I think, if I remember right. All of them were very, very expensive. And, and I, I would want to know, well, which one do I drive because of who, who do I got to impress? Mm. I mean, I, I, I need this one for work, but then on the other hand, after work, I've got to go over here and see these people, and then I've got to go do this. So which car is going to be the right one for, to do all, every, all this stuff? Right. And, and I mean, that, that was my hardest decision of the day. I had a, a and I still have, an uh, uh, investigation business that I can make as much as I want at any point in time, you know, and, 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 that, and that, that, that funded me. And there were a lot of other things too. Okay, but, but I came to the conclusion after doing everything and then losing it all, uh, except I, I still had my business, but I, I lost my health and I lost a rela uh, an important relationship in my life and it all happened at one time and it seemed like everything crashed at once. Not just that, but it was everything. But God knows, I guess, what how to step back and, and give you over to yourself. Yeah. And and or and He knows what buttons to push to get us to humble Amen. ourselves. Amen. And and all the all of my life, <clears throat> I knew Jesus as my Savior because I run to Him. I believed that 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 if you ask Him into your heart, you would be saved. Yeah. And I believe that if I ran into trouble and I, I could get on my knees and say, Lord, help me, and I believe in that, as a, in that kind of relationship, too, as a Savior. But I never understood what Lordship was. And Lordship is when He is the decision maker in your life. That's when you get off the throne and He gets on the throne. Because, see, too many of us are still sitting on the throne of our hearts. And we have to get off and let Him get on. But, but there are a lot of Christians, and I've heard it said. I, I remember one pastor told me. He said, you know, brother, if you want to serve God, you just go out and do whatever you want to do, and God will go with you. Well, that, that, well that's a lie. When Jesus is Lord, you can't go out and do whatever you want to do. Amen. And Jesus comes along with you. And for that reason, there are a lot of Christians that go out running and doing whatever they want, saying, Lord, bless me. God bless whatever I do. And they leave Jesus coughing in the dust a mile away while they're out running around. Amen. And he's no longer the Lord of their life. But lordship is that we're shackled in him. Amen. And we're not pulling him, he's taking us yes. where, where he wants us to go. We need to understand that. He has to be Lord. And, then, and Jesus himself said it. He says, why, do you, why is it that you call me Lord, Lord, but you don't do what it is that I tell you to do? And the Bible says in that very last day, when we take our last breath, that many will say, Lord, Lord, did we not do this in your name and do that in your name and heal the sick and cast out demons and all these other things? 
Did I not go to church? Did I preach? Did I sing in the choir or sing in the worship? Whatever, oh, whatever it may be. Okay, and he's going to say, depart from me, you worker of evil, because I never knew you. See, I mean, you just had a religious spirit. You were going through the motions. You were trying to climb your own stairway to heaven. But we never knew each other. See, it comes down to relationship. And without that, we don't go anywhere. At least anywhere we want to go. So I want to start this morning, and I just want to go back kind of now, and I want to touch on some points. And I pray that God will speak to you, each one of you individually, about this. And we'll go to the book of, uh, uh, what I turned to Song of Solomon for? That's not where I want to be. Um, hang on. How in the heck did I get there? Okay. So let me find where I wanted to start out. So we want to go to um, the book of Ecclesiastes, okay? I know why I got there, because it's the beginning of the next chapter. Okay, the uh, book of Ecclesiastes, uh, chap chapter 1. And, 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 and as you read this, you could really relate to it, probably. Okay, because probably you could relate to it in your own life. Okay, begins the words of the preacher, the son of, of David, king of Jerusalem. And here he says, listen to this. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Now the preacher is Solomon, he's talking about himself. Vanity of vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Do you understand what vanity means? Do you know? Pointless. Vain. It's in vain. It's for nothing. That that's powerful in itself. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit has a man from all his labor, in which he toils under the sun? One generation passes away, and then another one comes. But the earth, it, it abides forever. In other words, you, we work, and, and after we do everything we do, we just fade out. But, but the world continues. You understand? The earth abides forever. The sun also rises, the sun sets, and hastens to the place where it arose. It goes back and over and over again. That's what it's saying. The wind goes towards the south, and then it turns around to the north. The wind whirls about continually and comes again on its circuit. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is never full. To the place from which the rivers come, and then they return again. All things are full of labor. Man cannot express it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing. Right. Nor the ear with hearing. We never, it's never enough is what he's saying. Amen. No matter what we see, no matter what we hear, no matter what we do. Okay, it's never enough. Some people would say, well, if I only had this and I only had that. If I only had this woman. If I only had that guy. If I only had this car. If I only had that house. But if I only had that job, I, I'd be set. I'd be happy. <laughs> Folks, I, I've been there. You won't be. It may last for two or Your joy will last for two or three days. Yeah. And then you'll be starting to look around. Maybe if you get a good relationship, it'll last for a little while. But a lot of times then, you know, you don't say I love you anymore. You get married and you don't take your wife out to dinner anymore. She doesn't get her, she, she's just walking around in rollers all the time. She's not putting her makeup on anymore. <laughs> things aren't the way they used to be. <clears throat> I mean, you know, things, this is the vanity and the, the futility of life. Yeah. We hope for the best, okay? Because I think we have a heart. <clears throat> I think God created something in all of our heart for something better, that, but it's better, it, it's so good that it can't be achieved totally in this life on earth, okay? Yeah. Because we have a, a, a heart for heaven. Yeah. We have a heart for the eternal. Absolutely. We, we want to go home. Yeah. And our home is not in this world because the Bible says that we're in the world, but we're not of it. Amen. So we're, it's like E.T., you know, phone home. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. I understand. Verse 8. All things are full of labor. Man cannot express it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. Verse 9. 
That which has been is what will be. <laughs> that which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And listen to this, folks. And there is nothing new under the sun. I mean, if you have a marker, mark that. <laughs> mark vanity of vanity of vanities, all those vanities. You can put that one, underline that one. And then underline this, okay? There is nothing new under the sun. If we could just get that into our spirits. Because see, we all think that if we, we go out, somehow we're going to have a different experience. If I go out, I know, I know what you just said, Pastor Misha, but if I went and had that opportunity and I did what you said you did and all that, things would be different for me. No, they won't. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I went out and did all the crazy things I did. And then I came home when I did. Man, I'd be laying up in my bed looking up at these little markings on the ceiling, these little speckles, yeah. and sitting there thinking with tears in my eyes, God, there has got to be more to life than this. Amen. And I had it all. I really did. Look, I dated the people that you read about in, part, in people's magazine, people yeah. magazine. I had those relationships and things. I probably don't read about them anymore. Maybe it would be all like me now. So, but, but, but back in the day, let's just say that. Let's just put it that way. Amen. I mean, I did. All, I, I lived those that life. And you, you, in the end of it all, I mean, you're still unhappy. The reason is this, okay? Because, and, and I want to say, preface this by saying this, that the highest rate of suicide is among the affluent. Right, right. You want to know why? Because they spend their entire life trying to get the things that they think will make them happy, only to find out after they've got them that they're still empty. Right. Because God created a small spot in our heart, in the heart of every man, every woman, and every child on this earth. Okay, a small spot that he reserved that could only be filled with Jesus Christ. That's right. But see, people, they know that there's this empty spot. There's this spot there, and they don't quite get and understand that Christ is the thing that's going to fill it, that will satisfy it. So they go out and they try to satisfy it with other things. Maybe it's sex, maybe it's drugs, maybe it's materialism or different things. But they try to satisfy all, all, that, all of that only to find out at the end of it all that they're empty. And so when they're empty and they don't know where to go or they don't want to go to God, they end up taking a gun to their head or something like that and they kill themselves. Yeah. That is why, because they've spent their entire life trying to attain what they thought would bring them happiness and joy, only to find out when they've got it all that they're still miserable. Right. I remember a model that I knew. She was one of the original models from Victoria's Secret. I'm not going to say her name. But, uh, but I do remember she had a website. It was Blonde in L.A. She doesn't have that anymore. You know? But, but uh, she was a beautiful woman. Beautiful woman. Really, really pretty. Dated a lot of the actors and stars and stuff, and we were friends. And about two or three o'clock in the morning, because I would be, I, I would wait until two or three to get up to, to do my investigation reports for my work. Um, I'd be out doing other things and especially my reports late at night when everything things were quiet, I could concentrate. And back then, you know, we would have Yahoo Messenger. You, remember, you guys remember what that was? <laughs> like a little Yahoo thing would come on, ding, you know, and somebody, somebody be messaging you on, 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 on your computer. And she'd always be messaging me, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, telling me, you know, I don't want to live anymore. You know, I, I, I hate my life. She was single. Lived in a, in, 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 in a home, I believe it was a $10 million home or more. By herself. Split up with her husband. Her husband was a famous person too, you know. But, <clears throat> but, but she just... Um, but, but in her website, she looked all happy. She was driving her Porsche and happy and blonde and beautiful. But in, in, at night, she was, she was drunk. She was high. She was sad. She was miserable. She tried all these things. And she, but, but, but she couldn't find happiness. And we know the story of Mick Jagger, of course. He tried and he tried and he tried and he tried, but he couldn't get no, right? He couldn't get no satisfaction. <laughs> Hey, I tried and I tried and I tried and I tried and I couldn't get none either. And neither can you. See, when we live it in our own way and we live life according to our own rules and what we see on television and media, all those lies, 
we're not going to get that satisfaction. You won't get it. And if you get, if you think you've got it, you won't keep it. It won't be there for long. Solomon tried and he tried and he tried. He had so many wives. I don't know how any one man could put up with so many women, I'll tell you. And that's not a put down to the women. I guess he didn't have to live with them 24-7. You know? And I don't know how many women could put up with some guys either. But, uh, but just to be fair about it, but man, this guy, you know, he was something else. You know, so he came to the conclusion, though, that after doing everything that he had done, and he did it all, go, you should read uh, the, the book of Ecclesiastes and some of the, the, the book, the Songs of Solomon, and read, read Proverbs. And you wonder, how could somebody with so much wisdom end up going that, that way? And, and it puzzles me, but then again, you know, I've seen people that have known the Lord and that love God just turn around and go the wrong way too. And, and I was one of those people. I sometimes look back at my life and I think of the decisions I made in my life and I shake my head and I wonder how could I have done that? And I remember when I recommitted my, my, my life to the Lord after everything had crashed in my life. I said, Lord, I know that I lived the first half of my life selfishly and I lived it for myself. But Lord, if you'll just heal me and change my life, I'll, I'll, I'll serve you the rest of my life. I will do it. Lord, I, I surrender to you. I surrender. See, I never said those words, I surrender. Yeah. Because I had not gotten off the throne of my own heart. I still was the Lord. He was, he was little Lord and I was big Lord. I was still doing what I wanted to do. I believed in God, yes. But my decisions and my way overruled anything that the Bible had to say or His way. Who is the Lord this morning of your life? Are you still calling the shots? Are you the shot caller in your life? I'll tell you what, there's some young ministers here that have gone through pastor school, and I, 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 I just applaud the brothers that have done that. I think we should all give them a hand clap. They're here. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you something. Ministry, ministry is not a cure-all or a make it all, you know, you still have to give it up. Yeah. I have seen there are men today in preaching in pulpits today that are on television that haven't given it up. Mm -hmm. Instead of, of being in ministry to serve others, they want to be served. Yeah. They got a big eye, little Jesus complex. Everything is about them. Mm -hmm. We need to follow those that have surrendered. Yeah. And we need to make sure. That we have surrendered ourselves. Amen. I mean, this is one of the most honest and important messages probably that I can bring you. And I really hope that you listen because this is nothing complicated. I'm not in, I'm here preaching doctrine. I'm not here uh, preaching something to make you scratch your head to wonder about and think about. This should be easy for everybody to get in their heart. This is Christianity 101 if there ever was such a course. Jesus died on the cross Amen. to set you free from yourself Amen. and from the snares of the devil to open the door and bring reconciliation back between man and God, between you and God, so that you could inherit eternal life because you're going to spend eternity somewhere. I see people dying in their, in, in their relatives that got along all their lives, taking each other to court and fighting over their possessions. Oh. I've told my wife a long time ago, the only legacy I want to leave is just the Lord. Amen. I'll give them my Bibles and they can fight over those. <laughs> That's right. Nobody's getting any car, nobody's getting any house. I'm going to make sure. I'm going to pass a Bible out to everybody that I like. That's right. <laughs> Then there, nobody's going to take nobody to court. <laughs> Unless one prefers the King James over the New American Standard or something, you know. <laughs> That's what they want to do, go at it. But you know what? Uh, you know, the legacy that we, ought, that we ought to leave is the legacy of Jesus Christ. Amen. See, Paul knew that. Paul is in Rome, and he's about to be beheaded. For what? Preaching the gospel. But he, he left a legacy. 
We walk with the Lord today. We are Christians today because of what the Apostle Paul did 2,000 years ago when he raised up Timothy and he raised up Titus and he, he took those two men under his wings and he imparted to them everything that he knew and as much as he knew so that they could go on to the church of Ephesus and function there while he was in Rome Amen. awaiting to be uh, 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 beheaded. And other men and women of God have taken what they have and they passed it forward. They paid, or they paid it forward. So, and then those that, that heard it, they took it and they paid it forward. And those that, that received it from them paid it forward. And then today you've received it and you're going to pay it forward, hopefully. Yeah. When somebody comes into the doors of this church and you're, you're a 20 or 30 year old woman or, or, or a 20 or 30 year old man, maybe you're more mature than the Lord. You got some 19 year old that comes straight off the streets or somebody that's maybe even a little bit older that doesn't know anything about the Word of God, instead of looking down at them, yeah. okay, you're going to extend your hand, you're going to you know, take them under your wing and disciple them because yeah. the Great Commission doesn't just say that we're to preach the gospel to all the nations, it says that we're to disciple them. Right. It means that we're to nurture them, to bring them up, to quit thinking only about ourselves to start thinking about others. Because you see, I know my life. The, the thing that hindered me back in my day when I was living the way I lived was I was a selfish guy that only thought about myself. I put myself first. It wasn't that I didn't care about people. It was just I cared about myself more than them. But folks, okay, God is calling us to serve others. Not to be served. To care about others. And this is why Jesus demonstrated this. The, the, these two disciples of his are arguing with each other about who is going to be the greatest in the kingdom of God. And what does Jesus do? He says the one that is going to be the greatest has to be the least. Amen. Well, I don't know if they got that. Maybe they didn't understand that. So he demonstrates it. How? By taking his disciples and washing their feet. Yeah. And showing them that I'm the greatest, but I'm going to be the least. I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to wash the feet. Of my disciples. Because he was trying to bring the point across for all of us and those of us in ministry, and we're all in ministry, folks, yeah. that the least should be the greatest, and that we're, uh, I mean, yeah, the least should be the greatest, and that we're here to serve. Amen. Amen. We're a serve. The, great, the, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords served. Well, that's the legacy we want to leave. So we, we, we continue in the book of Ecclesiastes, okay, to the very, very last paragraph. And that's going to be in chapter 12. And we're going to read from verse 13, okay? So after everything that we've read at the beginning of Ecclesiastes, we kind of jumped a little bit forward. You can read more. It's interesting. But let's just get to the point. Okay, because here's what he says. He says this. He says, let us hear the conclusion... Of the whole matter. Do you, would you guys like to know what the conclusion is this morning? Yes. Yes. How, many, how many of you would like to hear it? Yes. Raise your hand. If you'd like to hear the conclusion, it says this, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. Right. Fear God and keep His commandments. Some people say, well, fear God, what do you mean? Am I supposed to be scared of Him, shaking my boots? No. Fearing God means to reverence Him. We ought to have a fear, though, of God. Amen. The Word says that we shouldn't worry about the one that can destroy our bodies, which is the devil. Right. But we should be concerned about the one that can destroy our body and our soul, Amen. which is God, the Lord. He has the power to do that. We need to understand who He is. Amen. Fear God. This is the conclusion. Fear God, keep His commandments, for this is man's all. This is all that matters. Okay? For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's no great ending that I have for them. I mean, this, this, the word is the word. I don't have a joke to end the message with. Or nothing like that. I got some jokes I can tell 
song to you, but take away from the message, so I won't. But I, but I pray this morning, folks, it wasn't a long word, but it was worth the drive from Yuma yeah. to bring it. Thank you. Because, because, because it's the truth. And because it's something every one of us need to hear. You see, no one can walk with God for you. You can come to every event that you have, and, and you've got a lot of them. And they're all good, and they're all important. But at the end of the day, Pastor Ryan can't do it for you. None of the other elders or ministers here can. I can't. You're going to have to make a decision. Your own decision with the Lord. You, you know, those, those here that are, are couples that are married, you need to do this together. But even you as couples can't walk with your mate. You have to have that relationship. I mean, you can't walk with them. I mean, you can't walk for them. Let me, let me clarify. You can walk together. But you can't do it for them. Yeah. You can't do it for your kids. Right, yeah. All you can do is, is plant the seeds yeah. and believe God through the Holy Spirit to water them and for them to grow. Yeah. But folks, I mean, we can come up to these altars with tears. Again and again, we get on our knees and, and, and cry and pray and stuff, and it's good to come to the altar. But if we haven't surrendered our life to the Lord, then what's the point? We can know all truth and wisdom like, like Solomon did in Proverbs. And, and Proverbs is one of my favorite books. I love reading it. It's powerful. Amen. And he wrote that under the anointing of the, of the Spirit of God. I believe that with all my heart. Amen. But we can know all mysteries and all wisdom and everything, but if we don't have a living relationship with the Lord, or we turn our back from that, then it doesn't avail us anything to come to the altar and weep unless we're willing to repent unless we're willing to ask him into our heart make him the lord of our lives Amen. turn back if you're hard in your hearts the bible says that today is the day of salvation it's not too late as long as you're breathing there are no guarantees in this life i can tell you that much two weeks ago i uh, one of the brothers that I went into ministry with, I found an organ. We, we founded a, a, an organization, one of the uh, several churches that I planted, and I was the co-founder of that. And he, he didn't die of COVID. He just had difficulty breathing and dropped dead of a stroke because he wasn't taking his blood pressure medication. He stopped. Forty years old, forty-two. Younger than I was, than I am. Man of God that had everything. Five kids, beautiful wife. Um, and, 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 it, and it all ended just like that. He didn't know. He, 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 yeah, before he dropped dead, he told his wife, look, I'm fine. Boom, hit the ground. That was it. Today, I know he's with the Lord. But what I'm trying to say, and I've seen it again and again. I ministered to a brother uh, in another another church, and he was came. And this brother had been attending that church for probably about four years. And all four of the years, he would be sitting in the very back corner where our sister's sitting back there, and our brother. And that guy, <laughs> I'd be I'd be ministering, and he seemed to be looking the other way or talking or doing something, you know. But he never seemed to be paying attention. And I, I, I didn't say nothing to him. I mean, you can't make anybody listen if they don't want to listen, right? But I never thought that he was really listening. And then after about three or four, four years, one day I, I was bringing a message. And at the end of the message, I gave an opportunity for people to come forward that wanted to ask the Lord into their heart that maybe they hadn't done it before. Or maybe they had said the words, but like I always say, words are only words unless you mean them. So people could come to this altar and repeat what I pray, pray, pray with you, but if you didn't mean it, it doesn't mean anything. you got to mean it, because it's between you and God. God knows. So, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Having one of those senior moments. What was I talking about? 
Oh yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, the, the brother, the brother, um, uh, after I finished bringing the message, came up, and I was kind of surprised to see him because there were about three others that came up, and he came up. And when I looked at him, I could see <coughs> that something had changed. He, he really wanted to make a decision for Christ. So I prayed for him, and I prayed for the others. We prayed, and. I stayed in the church, the service was over, I stayed there for a while, talked to a few people, and then I, I was one of the last ones out, and as I was walking out, I had my wife and my daughter with me, I was walking to my car, and out of the corner, out of the darkness, actually, some guy in a hoodie comes walking up to me, you know, and I couldn't see his face, so I didn't know who he was. So I turned around and he said, excuse me, Pastor, I turned around and looked, and uh, I said, yeah, uh, can I help you? And he says, reaches out and he says, I just want to shake your hand. He says, I want to thank you so much for that message because I needed it. And it made a difference in my life. And I said, well, you're welcome, brother. God bless you. You know, what, what else are you going to say? You know, I thank you. You know, it's, it wasn't my message. It's the Lord's and yeah. stuff. So, you know, so, uh, you know, I shake his hand. I get in my car and I leave. But after I get in my car and leave, I, I, I get home. This was uh, the night before Christmas Eve. The following day was Christmas Eve. <coughs> So on Christmas Eve, the next day, about 10 o'clock at night, I get a, a, a text from one of the set-free pastors. This was a set-free church. It was one of the set-free pastors uh, text me. He says, uh, Pastor Misha, I, said, I just wanted to, you to know that brother so-and-so died tonight. And I asked him what happened. He says, well, you know, he was going to celebrate Christmas Eve and he went to visit one set of relatives. And then he was going to see the second set. And as he was driving, some drunk driver hit him head on and killed him. It was the day that happened, the day after he made a decision for Christ. He sat there for four years, but he finally decided to get serious. And I knew it. I knew it because I could see it in him when he came and he shook my hand. His face was glowing. It was different. There was every, his whole countenance and everything was different about him. And I know today that he's in heaven. I know that he made that decision in time. But see, no one can make it but you. No one can walk with God for you. When you stand before the Lord, you'll stand before him alone. Your wife is not going to be there, your best friend is not going to be there, and your pastor is not going to be there. You will, it will be between you and God. And the big question will be this, okay? What did you do with Jesus? What did you do with me while you were on the earth? <coughs> That's the question. Solomon had to answer that question too. Amen. He came to the right conclusion. We just hope that he did the right thing afterwards. Amen. I believe that he did. But the, but the bigger question is not... Solomon, it's, it's, it's us. It's you and me. We need to keep on. The Bible says not to be weary, become weary in well-doing. Yeah. For in due time you'll receive your reward. Amen. There'll be some, maybe you've been struggling, you've been going through it, you're walking with God, but you're struggling. Don't be weary. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord is faithful to deliver us from them all. Amen. He will. Some of you say, I became a Christian, I got off the streets, and I thought life would be easy, and, and man, it's, you know, I'm going through crap. This is crazy, man. I got a target on my back. Yeah, you do. Because you, you left the kingdom of darkness and went into the kingdom of light. Now the kingdom of darkness really hates you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Before, the devil had you. Yeah. Now you got him. And he's trying to get, get you back. We can't. But when you go through these things, know that you're going to come out of them. Amen. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me, O Lord. No matter where I make my bed, whether it's in the highest part of heaven or in the depths of hell, Lord, you're there. Amen. So what, what, tell me what the Word of God says. He, I'll, I'll never leave you or forsake you. God is faithful. Faithful is he who called you, and he will bring it to pass. Amen. God puts within you to will to do of his good pleasure. Does that sound to, like a God that abandons you? No. 
Does that sound like a Jesus that doesn't care? Does that sound like somebody that wants you to fail and not succeed? No. He's there with you. You know, just don't give up. Don't stop. Keep seeking Him. Grow. Attend the meetings. And when you do, pay attention. Open your heart. Give God that time. You, do, you give your time to other things, give the Lord that time. We're here for an hour, maybe an hour and a half in a service. Put your heart into it. In a minute, you're going to go out and you're going to have lunch, or, 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 or I think, or something. And you put your heart and your appetite into that. But while you're here, put your appetite and your heart into the Word of God and listen to what I'm saying. Amen. There are some of you, maybe you're here, and you need change in your life. Don't look at me like a cow in a field. I'm telling you how to get it. But you've got to respond. It's up to you. God's not going to hit you over the head with a magic wand and make you respond. You've got to decide. You've got to decide, is life worth living the way that you've lived it in the past? Do you want to go back there? Do you want to continue that way? Or are you looking for a change? I want you guys to know, every person here, every one of you, and you've asked Jesus into your heart, okay, and you meant it, you surrendered. Your best days were not, are not behind you. I don't care what, how old you are. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care where you've been. I don't care if you've been locked up. I don't care if you've been on a street corner. I don't care if you slept in a box. I don't care about any of that, okay? I don't care if you were a prostitute. I don't care if you were a pimp. I don't care if you shot somebody. I don't care if you burglarized somebody. I don't care about any of those things. I want you to know something, okay? Your best days are ahead of you, not behind you. And for that, we can rejoice. For that, we can rejoice. Quit worrying. Quit thinking about your past life. Don't let your past hold you down anymore. The Bible says he removes that. As far as the east to the west, he remembers your sins no more. So why are you remembering? Why are you living in something that God has put under the blood? Quit. Stop it. Look forward. Quit looking back. And I'm going to close with this. I remember when I was in the military, I was walking from one base to another base, you know, just close. I walked to, walked somebody home, I can't, or something. I don't know why I was doing it, but I was going from one place to another. I got to be honest with you, okay? I mean, nice looking girl walked by me, okay? And I'm walking across the street. So I turned around and looked at her while I'm walking. Next thing I knew, I'm sitting on the ground. You know, I walked right into a light pole. Yeah. And I bet everybody that was driving by was laughing at me, man. I felt like the biggest idiot, you know. But I learned a lesson right away. You know, that you can't go forward when you're looking back. Okay, so don't look back. All right? Don't look back. There's nothing back there for you. Keep looking ahead, okay? Give the Lord a hand clap, everyone. With every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around for just a minute, okay, I'm, I'm going to let you go to your lunch here. But I only want to ask a question here, and, 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 and again, I don't want everybody looking around. This is a private moment. Maybe there's somebody here this morning, and I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to make you come up here. I'm not going to call you up. I know, I know a lot of people do, but I'm not going to do that. I'll say it right from the get-go. Because, see, I, I can't, you're coming up here, I can't pray you into, into a relationship with God. I can pray with you. But ultimately, you have to decide this morning whether you really surrender or whether you, you, you're ready to surrender. There, there may be some, and you said, well, I've been up to the altar before. I've said all those words. Yeah, but did you mean them? Did you mean them? How many people say to somebody, I love you, but they're no longer together? See, words are only words unless they, you, you mean them. Maybe there's someone here this morning and you, you've asked, you've said those words. But you didn't really surrender, but you're ready to surrender this morning. Okay? Maybe you've never done it before. Maybe this will be your first real surrender. And maybe there's others and you have, but you know what? You're just not walking the way that you were before. You've gotten cold. You've gotten off focus. You're straight a little bit. You're wondering, where is the joy of my salvation? You're ready to say, Lord, I, I need to recommit myself this morning. I need to recommit my life to you. If, if that's anyone here, and, I, and, and the Lord told me this morning before I came, He said, I'm going to give you souls this morning. 
So I want you to think long and hard, okay? There's no shame, okay, in recommitting. There's no shame in saying, I need to surrender. I'm not calling you up here. You're not going to be on TV or on camera or nothing. Nobody's going to see you. All right? But if there's somebody here this morning, you need to make that. You want that prayer today. Raise your hand. Because I tell you, I'm telling you, God will touch you. I see hands going up all over. Praise God. One. I'm not, I'm not even going to count them. Keep your hands up for a minute. Anybody else? I want, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call this morning on the Holy Spirit to just touch people here to convict your hearts. In Jesus' name right now, Father, let your Holy Spirit just, just fill this, this room right now and touch each person here, Lord. I, there are people with needs. Don't be stubborn. Stop it. There are some people here, you're stubborn. You just don't want to give it up. And God will let you. You can stew in your stubbornness and in your misery if that's what you want. And I don't mean to be mean, but I'm just telling you. That's life. Or you can get out. You can, you can get up. You can make it. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to ask all of you to that raise your hands. Go ahead and put your hands down. We're going to pray. I want you to pray this prayer with me. I'm going to pray. You pray out loud. And I, I, but you pray not. Don't look at me. This needs to be between you and God. You, know, you don't have to see him. He hears you. But be honest, okay? And those of you in the church, you didn't raise your hands. Your life is right. You, you feel good. You feel where, about where you're at. Fine. I'm glad. Okay, but I want you to pray the prayer with them so they're not the only ones. I want the whole church to pray this prayer. Amen. Okay, those of you that, that, that are ready to make your commitment, I want you to open your hands like this. Do what I'm doing. Why am I asking you to do it? Because it's a sign of surrender. It's a sign of saying, look, Lord, Lord I, I give up. Open my hands up to you. Okay, let's pray together. I want you to pray out loud. Everybody in the church, please, okay? Lord Jesus, I believe this morning that you died on the cross for my sins. That you rose from the dead and that you're alive today. Seated at the right hand of the Father. Now, Lord, I've sinned in my life. I've done things my own way. But I'm tired of living like that. And I'm asking this morning, Lord, that you forgive me for my sins. Those that I can remember and those that I can't. And Lord, this morning, I surrender to you. I open my heart and my life and I hand it to you. And I'm asking that you be my Lord and Savior. And I commit by the power of your Holy Spirit, by your grace and mercy, to serve you all the days of my life. And Lord, I thank you this morning that I am free. That I can say, I am a Christian, heaven bound. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody give the Lord a hand. That's right. That's worth shouting for. Hallelujah. Praise God. Brother, uh, uh, Pastor Ryan, come on up, man. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I'll be looking forward to seeing you again. I'll be here again in another four weeks, I guess. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'll be here for, the, for the Sunday morning. Amen. I'll get here for some, for some other things, too. Amen. God bless you, brother. God is good, huh? That one works. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> So when I opened up today, church, I spoke on James 4.1. Mm -hmm. What is really going on in our hearts that allows us? Pastor Misha wasn't here, right, when we did the opening? Mm -hmm. But yet it goes. You see how the Spirit speaks to the Spirit? Mm -hmm. What battles inside of you? That keeps you away from God. What battles? I'll read it again one more time. 
Because Ryan's words mean nothing, but God's words mean everything, right? Amen. What causes fights and quarrels for one among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? What are you truly battling that's keeping you away from God? What kept Solomon away from God? See, all the things of the world keep you away from God. Don't you know that if you love the world, you're an enemy of God? What keeps us away from God? When you go home and you lay your head and all there is is you and your thoughts and God. What are you truly thinking about? Who are you truly fighting? Because if you think you're fighting God, I'm letting you know right now you're not going to win. Right? You want him to continue to be by your side because... Once he lifts his hand away from you, what are you left with? Your own demise. And that becomes no bueno, right? As long, Lord, this is my prayer, as long as the tip of your finger is in my life, I know that I'm going to be all right. I know that I'm going to be all right. Father God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're on time. Every time. Every time, Lord. My timing is poor. My timing means nothing, Lord. But your timing comes right on time into people's hearts, into people's lives. Lord, sometimes we're lost. Sometimes we're found. But there's a time for everything. That's what Ecclesiastes tells us. There's a time for everything. What time is it for us here today? At Set Free Desert Center, Lord. Is it is it a time to be joyful? Is it a time to explore our hearts? What is it, Lord? Speak and minister to our hearts, Lord. Lord, we need you. We want you, Lord. Lord, that we know we came to find out that at least in my life, Lord, the second that I wanted you in my life, I came to realize that the more I needed you in my life, Lord. Speak and minister to our hearts, Lord. Lord, I pray for the food. Let it be nourishing to the body, mind, and soul, Lord. Bless those that are less fortunate. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 amen.